Hello guys and welcome to my channel. If you're new to my channel, my name is Johan and I post videos about my animals. So if you find that interesting, please consider hitting that subscribe button for more videos like this. And if you're new to my channel and this is your first video, you might be here because you just picked up a corn snake and you're on YouTube trying to figure out the best way to set up the enclosure. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm probably gonna stop talking, but I just wanna mention that my corn snake is still a baby. She's getting up to a juvenile, but I'm removing her from her enclosure because as you can see, I can fit my finger in here. And I'm kind of scared that she's growing bigger and she's gonna escape. So I don't wanna risk it. So I'm gonna move her into this enclosure and this setup is gonna be for Juvenal because she's getting there. And she's gonna be able to stay in this enclosure until it's time for her final enclosure as an adult. So this is a Juvenal setup. If you have a baby corn snake, I have a video where I set up the baby enclosure. So this should be a link above me somewhere. So if you wanna check that out, check that out. And before we actually get into it, I just wanna mention that I am not a professional. I love to learn stuff. So if there's something I'm doing that you don't agree with, just type it down in the comments and I would love to have a discussion with you or just just learn stuff, you know, because you don't, I don't know everything and I love to learn stuff. So if there's something, leave a comment down below and uh, we're gonna get into the setup. And as you saw by the title and thumbnail, this is gonna be a bioactive setup. And I guess I wouldn't call it a true bioactive setup because there won't be a drainage layer. And from my research, since corn snakes does only need 40, 50% humidity, the substrate's not gonna be that damp, so I won't really need a drainage layer. You obviously want some spots of the enclosure to be a bit damp so the cleanup crew can clean up and survive, first of all, because they need moisture to survive. Uh, but I'm not really worried about the drainage layer. Let me know in the comments if I am completely wrong about that, so yeah. But we're gonna move on and adding the substrate. And this is a substrate mix I'm using, that I've been using for a while now. Uh, this is basically as peat, I think it's called peat. Yeah, I think it's peat. And I mix in sand, I mix in leaf litter, I mix in some moss, and I mix in charcoal. There it is, charcoal. And that is all to help the cleanup crew do better. So we're missing a bit leaf litter in here, so I'm gonna add some more leaves. Uh, it's gonna help it look more natural. And you wanna mix that in with the substrate because that's where the cleanup crew lives. And we're gonna add some dead wood like this. That's also for the cleanup crew to eat. I'm gonna mix it up real nice. And you almost wanna create like a forest floor kind of look. Uh, and that's what I'm aiming for. So something like that. I really don't know how I wanna decorate the enclosure, so I'm just gonna go by offhand or whatever you call it, and uh, we're gonna see how it looks. So let's add the decor. All right, so this right here is the moist hide that I use for the other enclosure. And what I do is I keep this sphagnum moss a bit damp, so whenever the corn snake wants a spot that has high humidity, he or she can slither in here and uh, enjoy some humidity. And they usually go in there before they're gonna shed. And this has been working perfectly for pretzel, my corn snake, and uh, I'm obviously gonna include this into the new enclosure. But before we're gonna add the moist hide, we're gonna add the cleanup crew, which is dwarf white isopods. I'm gonna pour them in here just below the, the moist hide where that's gonna be. And then I have some isopods that I caught out in Sweden. I really don't know what they are. Uh, I have a video about that too. Uh, so if you can ID these, please let me know. If you add isopods from outside, you wanna put them and kinda like isolate them in a container like this for a long time, feed them and just get like everything out their system before you even think about including them in an enclosure where you have a reptile. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do it like this. And we have isopods in there. And the last thing I will mention about the cleanup crew is that they're gonna need some calcium. And I use cuttlefish or cuddle bone that the isopods will go to if they need calcium. You can also use eggshells, uh, calcium powder there. Let me know what you're using for your isopods. I'm, I'm, I would love to learn more stuff that you can use. But you can use those three. I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna basically cut it up a bit like this and just leave it 
around the enclosure and you want to put that down into the substrate. There we go. Have another piece right there. And I don't like the look of it, so I always try to like hide it like that. And it's gone, basically. So that is everything with the cleanup crew. And we're back with the moist height. And I'm gonna place that over where I put the cleanup crew. And that is because when I moist this down, the water is gonna come out and it's gonna keep this area right here a bit moist. Not too damp, but a bit moist. I really like this water dish. It looks very natural. I like the corner part of it. So obviously I'm gonna put it in the corner. And since the ventilation is right here in the front, if I put it here and I overfill the water dish, that's just gonna run out. So I basically only have one option for the water dish and that's gonna be in the back corner, right there. And one little tip that I forgot to mention about the moist hide uh, that I recently just found out. I, I went so long without even knowing it. So there might be someone out there that just be like, oh shit, I didn't think about that. So uh, I'm just gonna mention it. If you have a moist hide, put the heat mat under it and that's gonna make the moist area in there evaporate and it's gonna raise the humidity like crazy. So put the heat mat under the moist height to keep the moist height extra humid. That's a tip that you might already know. But I felt it was worth mentioning it. So yeah, let's move on. And since the moist hide and the heat mat is gonna be on this side, I also want to provide a hide for the corn snake on this side. That's gonna be like the hot hide. And I'm just gonna use this little hide right here. I think this is pretty cool. And I'm gonna place it down just right here. And the thing that I really wanna get into this enclosure for a you now is to try to provide some climbing opportunities. I have a pretty tall tank, so there is space to put something in there. I don't know how, but that's, the main goal for Juvenal, I think. Give it some climbing opportunities because I've seen so many videos and read so much about corn snakes that they love to climb. And I'm keeping mine in this baby enclosure where you can't really climb. So I'm pretty excited to see how it's gonna behave if I actually give it a bunch of climbing opportunities. So I have this, this is another snake hide. I think I'm just gonna put it like that for now at least. Or maybe, maybe right here. And then I will put this one right here in the middle. Basically like a tree trunk. And uh, is that what you call it? Tree trunk? I don't even know. Uh, but it's gonna be like that. And then I have all these cork part pieces that I can put like this. Okay, maybe not like that, but like that. I don't like the look of that, but like that. I'm gonna give you a better look once the setup is done because I don't think the angle you're looking at this right now is uh, really good so uh, but that's gonna be like that and have another height like this I'm just gonna place it down like that uh, so you can hide right there another cork bark hide and I have this piece and I think I can just there we go Nice. So now I have a lot of climbing opportunities right here for the corn snake. Just to come up here, come up here. He can hide in this, he can hide here, he can hide here. And he has a hot hide right here. He has a moist hide right here. And uh, we're gonna have to add some plants. So I like how the plants look. This is a puffos that's gonna vine up and that's gonna hopefully provide even more climbing opportunities for the corn snake. And then I also have this vine. Uh, I really don't know how I wanna put it, but there's no space in the air right here. So I might in some way try to get that in there. Um, if I stick this in like that. And uh, I'm really happy how this enclosure looks now. I'm gonna give you a better close up view so you can actually see how it looks from a better angle. And then I'm gonna put pretzel in there and I'm gonna give you some footage of her exploring the tank. So I'm gonna do a time jump and I will see you guys soon.
All right, guys, so that's gonna wrap the video. Let me know in the comments if you like this enclosure. Let me know if you have any tips or ideas how you would set it up. Let me know if this actually was helpful because I would love to know if this was actually helping someone. So, and that's basically why I do this like YouTube thing because you can help so many people, but you can also learn so much. So leave comments guys, because I love reading them and I will reply to all of them, obviously. Let me know if this was your first video. And if you stay this long, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you stay this long, even if you subscribe or not, please hit that like button. Because if you stay this long, you hopefully like the video. So hit that like button and I will see you in the next video.